Oh. Hello YouTube, Sentinel Age here for episode 39 of my Rotary Craft tutorial series. Uh, we're getting into a, a part of the series where we're basically talking about random, unrelated machines. <laughs> so uh, in this episode we're going to talk about the woodcutter and the fluid crystallizer. Uh, first we'll talk about the woodcutter. It's kind of funny to me that I haven't talked about this yet, but I haven't. <laughs> I checked. Um, Anyway, so the woodcutter is, as you can t uh, probably guess, Lorder Craft's method of auto farming wood. It's crafted quite simply with three base panels, two steel ingots, a 2x gear unit, and two saws, which you might remember us talking about all the way back in the grinder uh, episode. Anyway, I've got the woodcutter set up over here. So, basically, and I think it looks awesome. One of my favorite looking machines. Uh, the way the woodcutter works is you set it up at the base of a tree. It will uh, let you know if it doesn't have a tree. If I place it here, it'll say no tree. So it does. It detects trees in front of it. And then uh, to get items out of it, you can put like a. Uh, the simplest way is putting a chest underneath. You can also connect pipes. If you look down between the saw blades, you can see there's a square hole down there to denote the fact that you have to put. There's a hole here. That's where the stuff comes out. So you can put pipes there. Uh, easiest way is just to put a chest there. Um, now the woodcutter requires uh, 16 kilowatts. That's 64 newton meters. That's the power output of a steam engine. So it's perfectly uh, early game, very uh, very usable. If I turn this on. The woodcutter will begin first by destroying the leaves and uh, cutting the tree down. It cuts it down layer by layer. Cuts down the tree and replants the sapling. Grab some bone meal. And there we go goes right back and it places the items it gets into this chest and uh, uses one of the saplings that drop that it collects to uh, well that drops to replant the tree see now it won't always replant the tree sometimes there might not be a sapling that drops unless we, we can actually enchant this thing by right clicking it with a book, an enchanted book with infinity one, and this looks so cool. <laughs> now it will always replant the tree. And of course we can give it more power to speed it up. 65 kilowatts is the output of a gas engine. And that's pretty darn quick. I love it. I love it. Alright, so that's the woodcutter. Very straightforward, very easy, but very cool. I like it. I like it a lot. Alright, so that's the woodcutter. Now we're going to talk about the fluid crystallizer, which is quite interesting. It's crafted like this, three base panels, an impeller, two steel ingots, and three cooling fins. Now when you craft cooling fins, if you use shaft units, you will get three. So I, I would recommend it, because then you get the three that you need. It's great. Works out well. Now the fluid crystallizer is an interesting uh, machine. It can take a uh, pipe input. I'm using a fluid duct here just because but obviously you can use you know the rotary craft uh, liquid pipes now that crystallizer requires two thousand well two kilowatts and uh, one thousand uh, radians so if we pop this on there's the minimum power requirement there and this fan is uh, turning I have this set up in a taiga biome, which is why this is already at negative 15. This uh, 
snow biomes are a great place to play to put the uh, fluid crystallizer because uh, it's got to get things cold because basically this is a reverse magma crucible from thermal expansion it does the opposite it'll take fluids in and then it'll freeze them down and it'll output their constituent parts um, the easiest example of this is water put some water down water goes in gets cooled down as long as this number is uh, sufficiently low to cool the liquid which in this snow biome it is for all of them and after a little while we get ice now of course we can speed this up because two kilowatts is not very much power draw at all if I double the speed now it's, it, it, it gets going uh, quite quicker I'm just going to give it like 5,000. Nah, we're going to give it more than that. We're going to give it 10,000. I just want to make it go fast. All right, there, it's going fast. So now we've got, it, it's made some ice. There you go. Now, there is a neat little interaction, of course, you can do with the fluid crystallizer. You can take ice, and if you put a block of ice next to it, it will cool it down further because it's ice, and that's what ice does. So that's cool not necessary strictly because uh, I haven't needed to do it but if you're in a biome that's not already minus 15 uh, you may indeed need to do that alright so let me just break it to get that uh, water out of there easiest way um, these are all of the liquids that I have managed to get working with the uh, fluid crystallizer uh, liquefacted coal destabilized redstone resonant ender energized glowstone, lava, and the water you already saw. Uh, you can take any of these liquids uh, and put them in and you will get uh, something out of it. So if I put lava in here, oops, oops, just a little bit, we get stone, smooth stone. Probably the, mo uh, the most roundabout way I can think of to get smooth stone but you know it, it, it goes energized glowstone you should figure out it should be pretty obvious what you get from that that went in fast glowstone dust resident ender just showing you guys so you know that yeah it does work of course resident ender gives you ender pearls so that's nice Destabilized redstone. Now it doesn't work with molten redstone, which I think is from another mod. Destabilized redstone, however, gives you redstone dust. And then liquefacted coal. Gives you coal. Very uh, simple. Now, the fluid crystallizer is a bit weird. It doesn't seem to care what kind of liquids you give it. It will literally take any liquid that you can pump in there into its inventory. For example, this is an ethanol drum. And it'll take the fluid in, even if it can't do anything with it. Because I haven't been able to get it to crystallize ethanol back into ethanol crystals. I, when I first saw the, th the name, the fluid crystallizer, this is the first thing I thought of was being able to turn liquid ethanol back into crystals but apparently not because it doesn't work now if it does work I just don't know how to do it because I've gotten this thing as cold as it wants to go and it won't do it um, now uh, let's mention this little slot over here on the right this slot is for dry ice so if you put dry ice in here the dry ice will be quickly consumed in order to uh, reduce the temperature of the crystallizer even further so useful if you're living in a desert. <laughs> so quite useful if you're if you're not placing this in a taiga biome because it's already really cold here. Uh, and also because it's warm during or during the day, setting the time to night will uh, help cool it off even further. And I can get the temperature in this thing down to nine negative 98 C by using dry ice night in a taiga biome. 
and still you see that this ethanol here is not crystallizing. Um, so the fluid crystallizer doesn't seem to care what liquids it takes in, even if those liquids can't actually be crystallized. So be very careful. Uh, if you, I assume, if you put liquids in here that can't be crystallized, uh, you know, you'll have to like find a way to pump it out. Let's see if you can. No, at least not out that side. Let's see if we can pump it out, like, this side. No. So, as far as I know, if you accidentally pump a fluid in here that the crystallizer can't use, the only way to get it out of there is to break the crystallizer, unless we can take a and right-click it with a bucket, which I suppose is worth a shot. Just for completion's sake. No, you can't. No. And you can't put liquid nitrogen in here, I've tried. It doesn't do anything. So, there you go. Let me put it back to new. And turn that off. So be careful with the fluid crystallizer because you don't want to put a fluid in there that can't be crystallized because then uh, you'll just have to lose it. So yeah, that's the fluid crystallizer. It's pretty cool. It's basically a reverse magma crucible. A lot of the things that can be melted down in thermal expansions magma crucible can be re-solidified in the fluid crystallizer. So again, I, I wish that you could recrystallize ethanol. Uh, I'm wondering if there's a reason that you can't. Um, probably a good reason. I don't know. But uh, anyway, and if you can, I just haven't been able to get it cold enough. I don't know. It, it'll, it'll go down to negative 98, but in this biome, I haven't been able to get it any colder. So, uh, yeah. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. We talked about some very unrelated machines, but uh, yeah, we want to get through it. We want to talk about everything. And I'm still holding off on all of the machines that uh, rely on other mods uh, until version 25. Um, which is basically everything that's left in the processing section is a mod interaction, except for this one. And uh, so yeah, we're just going to go through and we're going to talk about these things. We're, we're, we're getting close to being uh, finished, uh, to be quite honest, except for these uh, pipey pipes here. I wish I have, actually haven't used most of them. And there's still quite a few in this section we haven't talked about. But uh, we're getting through it. And uh, well, it's still going to be a while before we're finished. But eventually it'll be finished. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the episode. Stay tuned for the next episode. I'm Sentinel H, and I'm signing out.